Please tell me you're not the person that just clicks the black and white conversion button, adds some contrast, and then calls it a day, because if so, you're missing a lot of potential in your black and white photos. So let's work together to add more life into our black and white images, while first identifying the key point where everything that I'm about to talk about will come into play. Now for this image, I'm going to be using Photoshop and Camera Raw, but pretty much everything that we talk about here can also be applied in Lightroom as well, depending on your workflow. Now the reason that I'm going to use Camera Raw in this case, instead of the main Photoshop workspace, is because of some of the masking features that are available in Camera Raw or Lightroom that make all of this stuff a little bit easier than just general layer masks. So if you open a raw photo straight into Photoshop, you'll have Camera Raw open automatically. However, if you're like me, I'm working with a TIFF file, which is still 16-bit, basically like a raw photo, but it doesn't open straight into Camera Raw, so I need to go and do that manually first. To begin, I'll make sure my image is a smart object by right-clicking and going to convert to smart object, so that way I can always re-access all of the settings that I'm about to apply after they are finished. From there, we'll go to Filter and then down to Camera Raw Filter to begin our work. Now, the first step is, of course, course, just clicking the black and white conversion button. This will turn our color photo into black and white. And from here, we can add our general global adjustments for contrast and things like that. So this is our first stage and where most people end up stopping the process. At this point, though, you might go and add a little bit more contrast into your photo using the contrast slider, the white shadows, highlights and black sliders and all those to just make your photo look a little bit more rich within the black and white conversion. We could also go into the black and white mixer where we can add luminance or brightness to different color ranges in our photo. Since this photo is pretty much all blues, the blues and aquas are going to be the ones that will probably make the biggest difference in this photo. At this point, after I've added these global adjustments in, yes, I have some changes, but it's not really that punchy, rich, dramatic black and white look that I'm going for. And if you feel the same way about your image, then this is the point that we need to begin adding our masks. So after you've done your black and white conversion, after you've added some global contrast, but it's still just feeling a little meh, that is when we'll go into our masking steps. Now here in Camera Raw, I'll just go to the masking panel and enable that. And what we want to do is basically target different sections of our photo to selectively add contrast and make things pop a little bit more. And since we have so many automatic masking features, our life is really easy with this kind of adjustment. So for example, let's start things off easy by going and editing the sky. I want that sky to be a lot darker and a lot more dramatic, having a very clear highlight kind of glow blowing up from behind the mountains. So to do that, I'll go and select the sky by clicking the sky mask here. This will automatically select the sky. Mine is a green highlight because of my overlay being set to the green color, but yours might look different. The green just represents the area that is targeted by our current selected mask. So when I go and edit any of the adjustments, such as the exposure here, it's only editing that selected area. But in this case, what I want to do is just darken this down a little bit, and then I want to bring those black down so those are really dark and the whites I'm going to bring those up as well. So now we have this kind of glowy look just using the natural contrast in the sky. Since the top bit of the sky was darker than the horizon line by using the exposure slider bringing that down and then pushing the whites and black sliders we're able to get this nice contrast as you see here and it really livens up the sky of the photo already. Now you could go and play around with other contrast sliders as you would like but for now I'm going to leave this here. Now this was obviously a pretty simple mask, but things can get a lot more complicated as you want more control over the exact edits within your photo. So for example, let's next say I only want to affect the highlighted area within the water here, but not selecting the stump. So that means I'll want to create a new mask. Before I do, I'll just rename my current mask to sky so that as things get created, it won't be as confusing. I'll just click on the three dots, go to rename and call this to sky. And now I'll go to create mask and I'll begin by creating a radial gradient. Selecting the radial gradient, I can just click and drag out to of course create a circular gradient. And I want to cover everything related to the reflection of the sky here. But the thing is, I only want this radial gradient to appear within those brighter areas of the sky. I don't want it to appear on the mountains or within the stump. So that means we need to do two different adjustments. The first being intersecting and the second being subtracting. Intersecting is when we take the selection of abilities of one mask and then merge it with the selection of 
abilities of another mask, and the only areas that will be edited are the shared adjustments between the two masks. So this sounds kind of confusing, but let me just show you how this would work in terms of selecting the highlights. If I were to just turn off the overlay for a second here, we can imagine that this sky that we want to select or the reflection of the sky is mostly highlights. So that means that if I intersected with a luminance range mask, I would be able to select everything in only those highlights. To do this, I'll click on the three dots of the radial gradient and go to intersect mask with, and then choose our method of masking, which in this case, we want to do the luminance range, which will allow us to select an exposure range within the photo. With that selected, I can now go and sample a color or an exposure range within the image, so the reflection of the water like so. And here we have a slider that we can refine where our luminance range is going to be visible. So at the most basic level, anything within this main box here is going to be 100% edited. And then anything from the outer edge of this box to this line here, this is a feather transitioning from 100% edited down to 0% edited. We then have the highlights on this side and the shadows on this side. So we can see that since this box is covering the highlights, this exposure range is going to be 100% affected by our adjustment. And then it's going to feather away into the midtones like so. But if I didn't want it to affect the midtones, I could click on this little slider and then move it over like so. And you can see how it now narrows it away from the darker tones of the mountains and narrows our selection more just to the highlights within the reflection here. So this looks pretty good to me. Let's Let's go and add some contrast now. I'll just do the same thing as before, bringing down the blacks a bit, bringing up the whites. So we're getting this really nice glow that kind of matches the glow we had in the sky. I'll disable the overlay temporarily here so we can just see that before and after and how that just adds a lot more life to the photo with the nice highlights coming from behind the mountains. Again, selecting just the highlights because we intersected the highlights luminance sample with our radial gradient. But if I were to turn this overlay on, we do have one little problem and that is we are selecting the stump still. We don't want to have that selected with the same adjustments as our water because if we can layer our adjustments a bit better we're going to have a lot easier time creating depth in the image by adding varied contrast for different pieces of the photo. So to subtract this next piece we just need to go to the subtract button now within the same mask that we were working in and then go and select the select objects option since we have a clearly defined object within the stump. This will allow me to just go and paint over the stump like this and it will just select that area and then subtract it from the current mask. So now you can see it is no longer selected because we are subtracting the area I just painted over from the radial gradient that was intersected with the luminance range. Now with this mask completed, turning this on and off, we have that adjustment isolated just to the reflection. I'll rename this mask to reflection. And now we'll go and do some contrast adjustments to the foreground next. For this next mask, what I want to do is selectively darken the shadows and the highlights within the foreground here. So to do that, as you might have guessed, we can use the luminance range masking option while intersecting it with a brush. So then that way we can only select one exposure range and then manually paint wherever we want that to appear. Let's begin by going and editing the shadows range first of the foreground. Foreground. I'll go and choose the create new mask and I'll begin by selecting the luminance range. I'll then go and click somewhere in the shadows like so and this green highlight is now going to select all of the shadows within the photo. We can then go and use this preview just to update the luminance range. So again anything within this box is 100% affected. Anything from the box to the line is feathering from 100% edited to 0% edited. So we can move this around to refine how much of our photo is being edited within the selected range. But since I want to manually paint in these adjustments with a brush, what I'm going to do next is intersect the luminance range with a brush adjustment. But if I do that before making any actual adjustments here, it is going to be a little confusing of exactly where you want to paint. So I'm going to just begin by darkening down the exposure a little bit for that sampled exposure range. And then I'll bring down the blacks and I'll bring up the whites just a little like so. We can refine this later, but for now this will work for me. Just add adding a little bit darker of contrast around there. Now from here, I'm going to click on the luminous range, go to intersect mask with, and now I'm going to choose the brush. 
So what this will allow me to do is if I go and paint over a specific area, it's only going to show the adjustment that we just made under the brush targeting the shadows that we sampled previously. So now that adjustment is not affecting the entire photo, but only wherever we go and brush over top of like this. So that way we can just go and use the brush in different sizes, just scaling it up and down with the bracket keys to selectively darken around some of the key shadows to make some things pop a little bit more like that. Now, if you find that the effect is too intense or something like that, we can go to our brush settings and then go and lower the flow down to a lower value. You'll also want to make sure that you have a feather somewhere between 50 to 100. So then that way all of your adjustments blend in really smoothly and you don't have any clear hard edges. So I'm just going to take a moment to paint around some of the corners of the photo, kind of add like a really heavy vignette look and then paint between some of the shadows of the rocks down here as well that I want to add more punchy contrast into. So I'll take a moment to paint over this and I'll meet you when it is all complete. With my brush adjustments finished, turning that mask on and off, you can see exactly where it is targeting. And if you found that the adjustments were too intense for your tastes, we can always go and just refine the adjustment sliders while we have that mask selected. It's all really easy to change later on. But now with the shadows finished, I wanna do a similar thing for the highlights. I'll begin by just renaming this mask to foreground shadows. And and then I'll create a new mask and repeat this process, but I'll go a little bit quicker this time since you hopefully get the process. Going to select luminance range, this time we're going to select the midtones or the highlights range like this. We can then go and refine the luminance area. So I'll bring in the feather from the highlights. I'll bring it away from the shadows a bit more and I might expand the inner box so that we're affecting more of the midtones in this particular selection. Now, of course, I only want this adjustment to be applied where I paint. So I'll have to intersect it with a brush. But before I do, I'll just do a quick exposure adjustment. So this will be a base edit for everywhere that I paint. I'll add some contrast here as well. And now with this good to go, I'll click on the three dots beside the luminance range adjustment below that mask and then go to intersect with and brush. And from here, I can now go and just paint over any of the areas that I want to pop and look a lot more dramatic. We can, of course, change the exposure and all of the other sliders within our adjustment settings here to affect how our mask will edit our photo. But it's totally up to you how you want to go about it. And again, it's only going to be applied to the midtones of the photo. If you make a mistake, just press command or control Z to undo it. Or you can hold alt or option to select the subtract from brush. So while holding alt or option, you can delete or erase your mask. And then when you let go, you can just continue to add to your mask after that. So I'm just going to take a moment to paint around my photo with this highlights brush and I'll meet you when it is complete. With the highlights mask finished, turning that on and off, you can see the difference there, just targeting the foreground midtones and highlights to make those rocks pop and have that texture pop a lot more as well. I'll rename this mask quickly to the foreground highlights. Now, before we move on to the next adjustment to really tie everything together, if you want a useful reference guide for all the little masking tricks and steps that I've mentioned so far, be sure to grab the free lesson cheat sheet in the description or pinned comment below. The free PDF breaks down all the little nuances of this process so you can get better results without having to rewatch this entire lesson again in the future. It's totally free and again in the description or pinned comment below. Get that if you want, but otherwise we're moving on to add some final touches. Now, once you've done your masking around the different layers of your photo, such as the sky, the background, the foreground, the shadows, the highlights, the basically all the same adjustments that we've done so far. We're now ready to go and do some general dodging and burning where we can use a brush while targeting the global shadows or highlights to selectively add contrast around the image a bit better. So this is a technique that I think works really well to tie together all of these adjustments and it begins by just creating a new mask, going to luminance range and then selecting either your shadows or your highlight ranges to begin with. I'll start by selecting the shadows. So I'll click just in the mountain here like so. This is going to select all of those darker tones. I'll bring back the 
luminance selected area from the highlights, and then I'll extend the 100% selected box into the shadows a bit more like so. With this good to go, I'll go and decrease the exposure to make it a little bit darker and then decrease the blacks to make it more punchy. We can play around with this later as well, but for now this will be acceptable. But since I don't want it to affect the whole photo, of course I'll go to the three dots, intersect mask width, and then I'll go and choose the brush. Now anywhere that I go and paint over will be darkened, but I'm going to use a very low flow here. So then that way, every adjustment that I create is going to be quite subtle, but I'll be able to just paint over the same area multiple times to continue to darken it. So remember, because we have the shadows selected, you can go and paint anywhere on the photo, but it's only going to affect your selected luminance range, which in this case is my shadows. So I don't need to worry about painting over into the sky and having it darken up there as well. All I have to do is just use this brush to just darken exactly where I want and painting over the same area multiple times because I have that low flow to add a gradually darker adjustment. I'll continue this around the photo and I'll meet you when it is complete for the next step. Once you're happy with that mask, just go ahead and rename it to Shadows Burn. And then we'll create a new mask, choose the luminance range, go and select the midtones or the highlight range this time. I'm going to subtract it from the shadows, increase it into the highlights, and then take it away from the midtones a bit more as well. So we're just selecting those brighter tones within the photo. Then I'll go and add a few little adjustments such as an exposure adjustment. I'll increase the whites a bit as well. You can maybe bring down the blacks just to add more contrast wherever we paint. And then we'll click on the three dots beside that mask, go to intersect with, and then down to brush. And we'll repeat this process again with a low flow of brush and just painting over the areas that we want to make pop a little bit more within the midtones and the highlights. So I'll meet you when this is complete as well. Once you're finished with that adjustment, just rename it to Highlights Dodge. And now let's take a look at our before and after from where we left our original black and white conversion and where a lot of black and white edits just stop and then where we finished off with with our final masking. So turning off all of those masks, this was our black and white photo after we did all of our general contrast adjustments. But with the help of masking, this is now what we get instead. So turning that on and off, you can see how much more this elevates the photo. It looks a lot more dramatic, a lot more interesting, and it's all done with the help of these selective masks. Since I'm in camera raw, I'll just click OK to save my changes back into the main Photoshop workspace. It will apply itself as a smart filter. So if I ever want to go and edit these adjustments later, I can just double click on this filter name to reaccess all of those settings later on. Now, I know that we did talk about a lot of masking techniques here, especially using intersections, which is something that might be new to you. But fortunately, you can remember everything super easily with the free lesson cheat sheet that you can find in the description or pinned comment below, breaking down all of the little steps that we talked about here. So you can hopefully create more dramatic black and white edits in the future. Now, I'd love to know what you think of this process down in the comments below. Do you think you're going to use it? Why or why not? But anyways, I'll see you in the next video.